Hey everybody, I am at my friend Ted's house, Vegan MacGyver, right here. Hey there. And uh, what are we making right now? We are making some hemp milk yogurt. So basically you have to heat the mixer to 145 so the pectin will take hold and thicken it. But then you need to let it cool down to about 110 degrees so that you can add the vegan cultures in it. That's pretty interesting. I bet uh, not many of you have seen yogurt being made before. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it's uh, pretty fun to do, pretty fun to experiment with. I, I make a coconut milk yogurt, but I wanted to see how hemp seeds would work. So who knows how it'll thicken? We'll find out in about 12 hours. But you have a few pages, so you, you're also, you're known as Vegan MacGyver, but yeah. you also have like a plant alchemy where you're making all kinds of like yogurts and cheeses and... Yeah, so um, Plant Alchemy, on Instagram it's Eat Plant Alchemy actually, but the company is called Plant Alchemy and I do different plant-based protein substitutes as well as uh, dairy-free things like vegan cheese and yogurts and other things. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm interested to see how this uh, comes out. Yeah, now it's just the cooling process. We have just a yogurt starter probiotic kit. It's yeah, vegan, yeah. vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO. Yeah. Two billion live cultures. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty incredible. So, so I find this a little bit easier to use than the capsules. Like the capsules you can use, you know, you need about four capsules for every quart of yogurt you make. And I, I just think that this is a little bit more consistent. But once you start making it, it's sort of like kombucha. You can actually um, use the old yogurt um, that you, or the pre-done batch and like four tablespoons of that, about a quarter cup of, of yogurt you've already created and then that can become the culture for it. Oh nice. So, um, you know, it's, it's all about whether or not uh, you've got something going regularly. So you can have constant yogurt. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason I'm sticking with this right now is because my other batch is coconut yogurt. And so if I use the four tablespoons from that in the hemp, I think it'd actually be pretty good. It would add a creaminess, but if anyone's allergic to coconut, then I've, I've done some cross contamination of it, so. Gotcha. Uh, these are the sesame seeds and we're gonna go ahead and toast them for some uh, gluten-free crackers. And one of the things to know is that uh, you toast the white sesame seeds first. You don't want to put it too high. I usually put it right around medium, medium low. And it takes a while, but you toast the white ones first, then you add the black ones because black ones can actually burn a lot faster. So if you haven't figured it out now, we're, we're cooking with Ted in his kitchen. Ellie's best. I, I just got them actually, but they're, they're tougher and finer than most of the other nut milk bags I've used. So I, I used it today to strain the hemp milk, but also I'm using it to sprout my quinoa and I'm sprouting it to make rejuvelac because that's how I make my vegan cheeses, I need rejuvelac. And I make my own quinoa rejuvelac because um, I wanna make sure that my cheeses are all gluten free, you know, so yeah. Always pay attention because we were filming another video and we burned these guys right here. Burnt sesame seeds. We're at exactly where we need to be. So about 110 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the starter now and you sprinkle it on top. The, the thing you have to be careful of is the starter will clump up. And that's pretty natural, but you want it as smooth as possible. So I usually get a whisk and I whisk it in. So you wanna make sure that the culture is, I mean the liquid is not too hot. And that's why we wait for 110 degrees. Any colder and it doesn't culture, you need some heat. But any warmer and it kills it. So it's a really sensitive thing. Um, basically under 115 and above 108. That's usually the target. So that's good to go. And now it's time to put it into the Instant Pot and let it brew for about eight hours. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in. Try not to splash too much. Now some people will actually go ahead and put it in jars first um, before they put it into the Instant Pot. I typically don't because I like to jar it later, um, but really easy, you just put it on yogurt, puts it to the amount of time, you can do less or more. Uh, I'm gonna do it at eight and a half hours just because I think it'll work. It didn't burn it. And now we're adding black sesame seeds so I get a nice mix. Uh, black sesame seeds, again, don't have to cook quite as long. Uh, they burn quite a lot easier. And so, I'm gonna let that toast for just a little longer. We're gonna pour the uh, sesame seeds into a cooler plate and let it cool down. They'll continue cooking for probably a good 20 minutes. So you put it in a cool plate to kind of help stop the co cooking. Uh, don't want to ever leave it in the pan because then it burns. So every day you keep your sourdough starter going. For people that don't know, like what exactly is a sourdough starter? What is a starter? 
Yeah, so basically it's uh, like wild yeast, uh, essentially, it's, it's a culture. So you feed it by just giving it water and flour. So every day you have to feed it. Uh, and there are sourdough cultures like in San Francisco and in France uh, that have been around for hundreds of years. Because they feed it every day. Exactly, they feed it every day. So there's a certain, there's a piece of it really, like there's an essence that still is from hundreds of years ago. So sourdough starter you can use in, in replace of, of yeast for pretty much any recipe. So I've made sourdough pancakes, waffles, bread of course. Uh, I use it for my bagels and my pretzels. So not gluten free, but um, you can make a gluten free sourdough starter as well if you want. And, and that's kind of what injera is based on. You know, a gluten free sourdough starter. So here I am feeding it and we feed it once a day. Um, you throw out <laughs> some of it actually. You end up throwing out most of it um, if you're not going to use it. And then you bring it down, we bring it down to five ounces and you do an equal part of flour and water. So five ounces of water, five ounces of flour, and then you're good to go. And that's the only thing in there is flour and water? Yeah, that's it. And I like to use a mix of full wheat or spelt flour and then a little bit of all purpose. If you only use spelt or you only use whole wheat, it gets a little bit too dense when you make a loaf. So I mix it in uh, with some all purpose. You hear that? You make that, you never have to buy yeast again. You never have to worry about it. In the meantime, you're making some flatbread for the fam. Yeah, yeah, so flatbread's great to go ahead and uh, freeze up. You know, so basically you go ahead and make it ahead of time, par bake it a little bit, and then now they've got something they can make pizza with. Cool, and basically this is just the leftover uh, starter that you had. Right. You add a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt. Yeah, and then to this we're gonna now add like uh, probably about six cups of flour to make a dough. We're gonna make some salad, just simple, some uh, greens, some mixed power greens with baby kale, baby spinach, a uh, little arugula, and then we're gonna just, you know, take a dressing. I have some okara cakes that we're gonna top it with, so it's gonna be a kind of hot salad, and then got some dressing for it. Yeah, I think it just dinged in the air fryer. Yeah, so let's see if it's ready. Ooh, needs a little bit more time to brown. But these are the okara cakes, and it's a little bit like crab cakes, so just gonna do it a little bit longer to brown them. Okara is uh, the, basically if you make soy milk, when you grind up the soybeans, it's all the fiber and high protein stuff that's left behind. Tofu residue. Yeah. We're making dinner. Yeah, so I'm making polenta rancheros, and the um, the base of the of the ranchero sauce is actually onion and garlic, really, um, blended up with tomato. So I'm, I'm going to fry up the onions in just a moment. But to do that, I need a rough chop of them. You don't have to be beautiful. It's all going to get blended. So this is actually going to be used not just for the uh, ranchero sauce, but also the Alfredo sauce for the potatoes. Yeah. So this is the. Coriander, the cumin, and the onions cooking up for the ranchero sauce. Now oh, these really rose. That sourdough starter was like totally alive. And this is the cow, yeah. steamed cow. And what's this? This is the ranchero sauce. Ooh, so I'm gonna do a final tasting and then seasoning. Yeah, just about done. Just adding a little bit of paprika for color and some depth of flavor. And these are the au gratin potatoes with the uh, plant alchemy yeah, okay. yeah, cashew alfredo sauce. And over there we've got the ranchero sauce all done. Mm, so good, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing the happy dance because she got some good food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those bagels are really good. Oh my God. You'll have to take some with you, okay? What, oh. really? Yeah. You do not have to ask me twice. Because mm. my family's, mm. they're probably not going to be able to finish it all, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. This family. Are you yeah. sure? Okay, we have our dinner made by Ted. I'm wearing my Happy Healthy yeah, Vegan shirt. And then you have a Happy Healthy Vegan here. We have the actual Happy Healthy right here. And he's about to feast down here. And then, and then it's hey, just Ted, good dinner. Wine. Thanks. <laughs>
Well, Ted, this looks terrific. What is it? Uh, these are beet ravioli, and they're filled with the Kite Hill almond ricotta with a little bit of basil inside. And on top, I've drizzled 18-year-old balsamic vinegar and also crumbled some plant alchemy goat cheese. That balsamic vinegar is older than our daughter. Yeah. All right, we're going to get going. Yeah, actually, we're going to get split. They're leaving, so. Yeah. Hey, it was nice seeing you guys. Yeah, nice to see you guys. See you again, oh, yeah. Chris. And Good maybe day. we'll see you Sunday. Yeah, it looks yeah, like it's all going to work out. Yeah, we'll probably be there in the later, latter half of the day. By the time you guys see this, it would probably have already happened. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And you will know when we have, will have seen you. I don't even know what tense of speaking to you. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so it was nice having that was my you. vlog day with Happy Healthy Vegan with Ted over here. Uh, so finishing up today's video, um, you made an epic dinner for everyone. Thank you. Hey, thank you. And uh, yeah, I'm 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 just glad that you let me come over and uh, experience this way, do some videos with you, and uh, have dinner. It was my pleasure. And any time, I swear, any time. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. <laughs> Definitely go check him out on his social media. Walk Wild Side, Vegan MacGyver, and Eat Plant Alchemy. Wow, you remembered them all? I, yeah, I got them all. I've been saying it all day. <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for this vlog. Uh, thanks again to Ted, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.